This is the story of a home-based trader, Lavender Singh Shah, also known as NAP, uh, who made $50 million and crashed the U.S. Uh, financial markets and he was arrested by FBI and uh, ultimately uh, uh, all this, uh, uh, he was, uh, the court uh, ordered that he cannot trade again. So let me so this was the post I uh, wrote in 2016 when the British bomb crashed to 1200 pounds in just two minutes. And a flash crash of 2010, uh, and that was caused by Navinder Singh. So as uh, uh, by the uh, investigated by the U.S. regulatory authorities. So flash crashes are uh, a constant danger. Uh, thankfully, for the last uh, few years, uh, they had not occurred. But uh, always remember when the market starts moving very fast, especially the electronic markets, then that uh, can easily fall five hundred thousand points in a matter of minutes. And uh, when the market falls very rapidly, then uh, everything freezes and the stop loss uh, will not work. So even if you have based stop losses, so you will find that uh, it has not worked and uh, your account is in a negative balance. Uh, this happened in the flash crash of 2010. When people found out that uh, uh, their uh, accounts were negative balance of fifteen thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars. So always keep in this mind that stop loss doesn't work when the market moves very fast and everything freezes and there's the one on, on the other side of the market. So the flash crash uh, took place on May 16, 2010. And when the United States financial markets crashed and S&P 500 index fell down 1,000 points, more than 1,000 points in just a matter of few minutes. And later on, it made the recovery. So flash crash 2010 was extensively uh, investigated by U.S. regulatory authorities. And... Uh, You'll be surprised to find that the flash crash 2010 was caused by home this the Navinder Singh Saru. Navinder Singh Saru was living in his parents' house in London. He would trade daily from the basement from his parents' home. Primarily, he was active in even the S&P 500 futures market. So this was uh, Navinder Singh Saru's trading strategy. He will sell without getting his order filled or uh, already achieved selling contracts without the sell order getting filled. He will sell a few points above or what you call takes above the best offer and keep updating the order so that even if the market moved up, his sell order won't get filled. Doing this manually is not easy. It requires constantly watching the market. So he called his trading strategy to a robot. This is what he would do. Place big sell orders using the robot. Robert would uh, make sure those sell orders are being updated and always a few ticks above the best offer. When other traders would see those big sell orders, they would take it as a signal to sell. This would uh, drive down price when price would go down. Now, when the Sensaro closed his robot and buy at that low price, when other traders would see the big sell order going, they would start buying, thinking the water market is going up. This would drive the market up. This is how Navinder Singh Nav was trading the S&P 500 futures. It's a trading strategy known as spoofing. It always works, but it's legal. Uh, another interesting thing is that uh, Nav never used the stop loss. He never bothered to use a stop loss. So uh, spoofing is illegal, and Navinder Singh was spoofing. Uh, it was the duty of his broker to make sure that he got a warning in a few times and persists his account gets suspended. So, but uh, he did get a few warnings, but uh, didn't bother about them. 
So Dell in November same for trade. This is okay for Robert Price and Hughes sell for the diamond down price when price will go down. He will say chop the Robert and buy as uh, above. But on May 6, 2010, things worked out too well for him. On May 6, raising so 62,000 e-mini S&P futures contract. Notional value of these futures contracts for $3.5 billion. Namendar Singh uh, made a total profit of uh, something like uh, $900,000 $900, on May 6, 2010. This couple with low buying interest shown by the investor just crashed the market. Now, spoofing is illegal as uh, the Bob Navender has been using his spoofing strategy on daily basis and regulatory authorities kept sleeping. The flash crash opened eyes of leg laboratory authorities with the same spoofing. All this is well documented. It was one large sell order that panicked that other trade and this caused the market to crash. Gordon would investigate him. When price started falling rapidly, everything freezed. For seconds, there was no market. Everything had freezed. I mean, interesting at the time of flash test, I mean, the thing with Fring Robert was switched off. As SEC reports insist that he was part of flash crash, even if it's Fring Robert was switched off as a big sell orders for the trigger that panicked the market. As above his profit day should have been dictated will go for much earlier and his trading price suspended. So this was uh, then ultimately the U.S. authorities lodged a criminal complaint that they, uh, they went to U.K., arrested him, brought him to U.S., and he was tried in, and uh, ultimately he had a key bargain. So as I said, he came from a working class background. He never used to uh, face a stop loss in his trading strategy. So the uh, firm where he was uh, working uh, was happy with the money he was making because, of course, uh, you know, there was a share in the profits. But uh, the owner was always worried about the market running away and causing a huge stall sales. <laughs> he would leave uh, his home every night without placing uh, any stock loss. His break, break came when one day he observed attacks for bossing or from a sport level again and again. So this gave him the idea to short it when it bounces. So he opened up position and next day found that it made 10k profit. The except for 70 point during the night. Never built the trade daily for next two weeks before going home every week. And uh, most of the time, he made big profits, some he lost. So uh, he ultimately made million dollar profit. So what was happening? This was happening due to a French trader who had opened a large position on desks for his uh, bank. He was popping his position, opening more lots every night. His market was going down. He didn't want to lose his job. Later on, the French bank found out uh, what was happening. The trader was... Uh, arrested and the case was lost against him and went to the jail and the court ordered him to pay some for $2 billion to the bank that he had lost. So once he had $1 million with the, at, uh, the money in his account, he started opening the 100, 200, 300 lots. At that time, he got the idea of the trading robot. And uh, as I said, on the, on the day when the market crashed, with eight and more than eight hundred thousand dollars as profit. So in the beginning, uh, when the market crashed, uh, the investigation started. Uh, first, a uh, few hedge funds got accused, but uh, uh, later on, when the forensics of that uh, at, uh, trading activity was done, there was a trader who was constantly placing. He would sell orders, and uh, these sell orders were hundreds in a number, opening and deleting, opening and deleting, opening and deleting. So from there, that uh, the uh, investigating authorities uh, got the idea that the NAB was responsible for the market crash. 
So he was arrested. His parents had no idea what he was doing. They never told the parents that uh, he had made a fortune of fifty million dollars. He was still living a frugal life and uh, just uh, never mentioned this thing to who. And uh, in a way, he was uh, picked by a few uh, people uh, who uh, became his financial advisors and told him to uh, invest the money with a Mexican name of Garcia, who was a crook. He ultimately ran away with his money. So this is how Nav made his fortune, then lost it. And uh, in the court, uh, the uh, judge uh, told him that he cannot trade again. <laughs>